Welcome back, everyone, to the next installment of Corpse Party. We are playing as Ayumi and Yoshiki, I assume it's both of them, in a flashback sequence after Yoshiki ran into Mayu, which is an entirely new set of events, and oh my god, I can actually investigate the showers this time. That's glorious. But first, check the third from the right. Thank you. Yeah, well, thanks. One, two, three. So the third from either direction. Oh! The tin shower head spun a small bent piece of wire fell from the ground. Come in handy for what? Again, I don't even get a description this time. Pressing start does nothing. I can't... I, yeah, it's just here's a piece of wire. So what can I use it for? Lock picking? Foss is rusted, the handle's spinning freely. It's unlikely any water will come out of these pipes again. Okay, I checked each because they sometimes had different descriptions in the first game. While I don't have the rusty key, presumably I'm gonna have to go back there with Mayu. Hello? Comparatively fresh corpse in the pool. Female middle school student. Back of her head seems to have been bashed in, revealing white skull and pink brain tissue through the parts in her hair. Must have been struck pretty hard. Name tag. Thank you. Nothing? Wow. We're made of tougher stuff than Naomi is, apparently. Otherwise, I'm not seeing anything to do out here, so I guess the pump room is going to be something to do when we come back with Mayu. So... It looks like the map reset. I'm okay with this. Uh, let's hit up the entrance first before I start playing around with the stairways. Not even a corpse. How does that work? Doors frozen in place. Can't leave. Second wing. Might as well gray out the bad areas of the map now. Get it over with. Oh. Large hole. Okay, so I can't go up those stairs. Okay. okay. Alright. Well, let's try this way. If this area is blocked off, then this makes my... Uh, exploration even easier, but it looks like I can actually go. Hello, new areas. Excuse me while I go corpse hunting. Oh, is it door? Otherwise, nothing of note. Alright, I'm game. Okay. I guess that explains why it's a dead-end hallway on the map. There was a door here, but it's just irrelevant. 4 is locked, meaning it can be opened. Oh! I wonder if it uses up the wire. You know, championship, I still say Jill Valentine's gonna win. She's the master of unlocking. You know what really pleases me? Seriously, think. Actually think back. When is the last time you have ever ever heard someone actually use burgle as opposed to burglar. Burglar's burgle, but no one ever says it. Oh! Here's a question. Yep, thought so. I might have to pick and choose which doors to unlock, so this is why I say before this. 
作りが単純な古い鍵で助かったぜ So I can go in here. Now here's the question. If I find another door that's locked, I might reload the game and see what happens. Oh, I guess I go through the map. Mm hmm. Oh no, this music. I remember this the long hallway with the kid. The long chalkboard that like slowly had drawings just appear on it. Just in case it gives me one of those timer situations. <laughs> <laughs> no timer, huh? Oh, hello! I can't even read it. Baby, baby, this is gonna be sweet! One more time. You think it'll be the Buried Alive ending, or are they gonna go worse because it's a new game? Let's find out. Jump scare. His icy child sized hands caught hold of my wrists and wouldn't let go. Try as I might, I couldn't shake him. Whoa! I'm sorry. I didn't think this would happen. I thought it was buried alive. This is gonna suck. When I came to, I found myself restrained. I couldn't move a muscle. Okay, place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Which is worse? Mayu being drawn and quartered and having her back broken? Or whatever the hell this is gonna be? I was lying face up on a table with my arms and legs bound by rope? I guess. It was digging into my skin, whatever it was. Just for the record, that is blood on the ceiling, and like, in various places on the ceiling. My head was the only part of my body that didn't have its movements prohibitively restricted, so I was able to look across the room to some extent. The walls and ceilings seemed to be made of dirt or mud. I didn't get the impression that I was in the school anymore. It looked and felt kind of like I was in some basement room, or more specifically, a mine or bomb shelter or something. Oh. This is the kill room that you go into at the end of the first game in Chapter 5. There's like a bucket of just blood. It's like there was a student here. <laughs> She's gone now. This is where they had, um... Seiko's body. Oh, God. Thick, gloppy bloodstains saturated every corner of the room, and the stench in the air was enough to send a shiver down even the most hardened spine. It seemed fairly apparent what this room was used for. At least, it was as apparent as it needed to be. But the scariest part was... I remembered this place. Or I had a nagging sense that I'd been here before, anyway, much like Shinozaki had said about that weird classroom just moments before. You know, I was kind of hoping for the hammer man, this is way worse. <laughs> Ooh, that face, Jesus. There he is. The voice belonged to a little girl who looked like she was right around 10 years old at most. 
That is a wicked grin. Look at that. Hey, you, Pikachu. She was wearing a red dress and staring at me through a mop of messy black hair with a smirk on her face and a condescending glint in her eyes. Also, one more reference to throw out there. She also voices Tony Tony Chopper from One Piece. Complimenting me won't make me feel good, you bastard. Sachiko. Huh? Sachiko. I muttered a name without thinking, surprising myself. How did I know who this was? Or more to the point, who was Sachiko? Oh. Oh, that is ass. Thank God this is a wrong ending. Because, I mean, seriously, this has to be a wrong ending. You're not supposed to look at the ghost. This is going to be unpleasant to watch. Like, this is going to be really bad. Like, I... Like, you have to see all the wrong endings to get to the secret chapter, but th this is gonna suck. That actually pissed her off? In the very next moment, everything around me seemed to go white. Who was that, the Hammerman? I am not psychotic, that's why I have this room. Sachiko was now staring at me with a cold, unmoved, and unwavering expression. I was in more pain than I'd ever felt in my entire life, and I got hit by the hammer man in my first run through the school. I focused my gaze on the filthy giant at her side who seemed to be doing her bidding. Poor guy. I feel so bad for that guy, too. He doesn't even like this. His enormous hammer was still resting on the mess that was previously my right ankle, ooh, up until about a few seconds ago. I was all too aware that the extreme impact had pierced my flesh, shattered my bones, and even sprayed the room with shards of marrow? God, wow! I've never even heard of that description before. Blood, sure, but who sprays marrow? That must have been freaking vicious. This was beyond pain. Every last nerve ending in my body was on alert. I could feel the underside of my skin. Wow. I wanted to puke, but I knew it would do no good. <laughs> That's probably... No, that is definitely worse than what she did to the three kid. Well... Well, that one kid she dealt with for a half an hour. So, let's see where this goes. I should not have clicked that ghost. Hopefully we die before it gets to that point. We need our heart to live. <laughs> You're not gonna lie, Hammerman wasn't such a good option after all. I was thinking of Chapter 4 of the first game, but this is freaking comparable. <laughs> Every one of Yoshiki's lines is freaking awesome, have you noticed this? I tried my best to stay strong and not give her the satisfaction of seeing me in pain or afraid. And she is not amused, good. But in truth, I was scared out of my mind. All I wanted to do was shrink back in fear and agony. It took every fiber of my being to resist. All the more reason this guy's a freaking beast. Ah, so. Ja. <laughs> what else? I wonder what that means. 
I sure hope that doesn't mean the scissors. The red-eyed giant. Oh, jeez. Yep. He laid down his hammer, but rather than feel relief, I was instead even more worried by his sadist her sadistically overjoyed expression. This is gonna freaking suck. Her favorite. I was flabbergasted. I couldn't even speak. Is it the scissors? Oh, damn! Oh, wow, that is way worse. Might want to get on that now, actually. As she said that she drew her face in close, and I could feel her tiny cold lips sucking the tears from my cheek. Really? Like freaking Cartman levels of douchebaggery? Like, this is blowing my mind. This is going on like a proper story cutscene. I can't believe they're putting such effort into a wrong ending. This is like unreal. Is it over? Is it over? Is it over? Is it over? Thank you, God. That is some of the most uncomfortable I've ever been. That seriously rivals Chapter 4's canonical ending of the previous game. That sucked. Ugh. And I'm getting them in order, too. Yeah, I guess I'll save. Jesus. That was freaking terrible. Like, never again. God damn, that sucked. Ugh. Ugh. And we're only like halfway through the installment, too. I can't even be like, well, I'm stopping here. Yeah, there we go. Hey, I got a brilliant idea. Called a stroke of genius. I'm not gonna look at the ghost. Jesus freaking Christ. No, freaking pull it. Oh! Well, that's a little different, isn't it? Yeah, with pleasure indeed. Jesus Christ, that sucked to watch. Now, what do you think opened? I'm gonna go in the hallway and see what happened, because I don't know where that thing opened up. <sighs> huh? I can't even go back in? Oh, yeah, just best not to go back in, yeah. Uh, God damn! I am f I'm literally feeling that last cutscene. Ugh. No bodies. Um, alright. Oh, hello. Red chalk looks like a tomato smashed against the wall. Based on the cruelly colored shapes, it was likely drawn by an el uh, elementary school student. An arrow is pointing at the tomato with a label written in sloppy letters. Girl goat splat. Is that a portent, or is Mayu somehow already dead? Because again, Yoshiki met Mayu, so maybe this is something... Or don't even tell me it's someone else. 
can't. Hello. I'll deal with you shortly. Oh my god. I, ugh. Like, I'm like, I'm like harping on this, but give me a goddamn break. Fossilized remains from a student. Seems small. Fifth or sixth grade at most. Name tag. Thank you. Hi. I know. Still at zero. Yoshiki's made of tough stuff. Uh, let's do this. Where was that secret... Oh? Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Give me a second. Looks like nothing. So this area is just totally pointless. I guess you have to investigate the door to go in. So that's locked, but... Trap door wide enough for a person. Oh boy. Oh, come on. Alright. This is why this game is a lot more lenient than Corpse Party. Save whenever the hell you want. Corpse Party, it's like, oh man, where was my last candle? <laughs> I won't look at ghosts this time. Okay. Oh, oh! Is this that custodian room? So that's something I can look at. The heater doesn't work, so let's just knock that out right now. No way to light it. It says without fuel, there's no way to light it, implying I could find fuel, or is that just just saying? Yeah, no power. But wasn't the sound of TV static audible from the hall moments ago? Yeah, can't go in the closet yet. So let's check the uh, the key item here. A chest. Mm, take it. Okay. A finely detailed accessory case made from tortoise shell. That actually looks pretty cool. The design's outdated, but the craftsmanship system must have been expensive back in the day. Slightly shaking it produces a rattle. That wouldn't be a tongue, would it? Those were just in bags. Could this be something new? Does this require the rusty key? Not sure if we'll need it, but might as well take it. Oh? The trap door? Bitter. It's bitter. It's where- okay. Oh. It's wearing down my back teeth. Crunch, 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 crunch. That's why I said we should stop this. I want to go to karaoke again, but now with all those aphids around. Ugh. My toenails are gone, so I can't walk. Ugh. Shinozaki saying that? She's become possessed. Her whole body was slanted with her head leaning against the wall, and she was completely focused on one specific section of empty floor. She, she got some really creepy faces in the previous game. <laughs> Here we go again. Ooh. Banging her head against the wall. The motion was almost rhythmic, as if in time with... You could hear it, the ticks of a clock or a metronome. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what? 
After stumbling around almost drunkenly for a few moments, she suddenly took off running. She left through the trap door and out into the hall. Okay. So it looks like that that wire was a required item, and the only door that could be picked was the one I picked, so I think we're good. Unless there's that openable lock with Mayu that the rusty key didn't work on, but I don't know. Naho! You bitch. I can't forgive you. You. <laughs> Absolute bitch. If you forgot why, you'll probably find out why. I'm not certain where she came from, nor when or how she got here, but all I know is that she is a complete and utter bitch. She seemed to be about the same age as me. She looked mostly normal, but her eyes were much less vibrant than they should have been, appearing flat and lifeless like those of a dead fish. Her name was Naho Sayonoki. And you know Sachiko leaves her alone for a reason. Oh yeah. There's a little more to it than that. Piss off. それより今の彼女、大した才能をお持ちのようで。そうだ、白崎。Oh yeah, good job. That is, that is an awkward way of talking. And I myself have a stilted way of talking. <laughs> She's not in the creepy face yet, but her mouth's kind of like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Because remember, she got a creepy face exactly once in the previous game, and it was like, whoa. That, that actually creeped me out more than Sachiko's face. Although the new Sachiko face was a damn contender this time around. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, <笑>くちよせとか髪下ろしとか悪魔つけとか言われる行いをするものです。ふ。いたこみたいな。おお、this <笑> いくらこの天神小学校が特別な状態にあるとはいえ、例そのものではなく、こんな残りかすのような思念を。いや、and She's got that face again, like, yes, excellent. あれが自分をコントロールしている状態だとでも彼女は抜群に感度が高いアンテナを頭に24時間くっつけているようなものでも周波数を選ぶどころかスイッチのオンオフの仕方さえまだあのままでいずれ回線がショートして壊れてしま
And remember, that was a wrong ending in the first game, so you know it's coming up sometime this game. And it'll probably be horrible to behold. I'm trying to help him with his research, you see. Making me the worst person in the world. Now I'm sorry, remember this music from the first game? There, kind of heard it. This is usually what comes before a wrong ending, so I was getting kind of on edge. But this looks like plot, and it flashed white, so that's good. Oh. This was the big one. I literally couldn't stand up. I fell to my knees on the floor. And then I found Mayu? I couldn't even tell you how long it lasted. It felt like it would never end. But eventually, little by little, it did subside. I stood back up and surveyed my surroundings, but as expected, the ghost of the girl was nowhere to be seen anymore. And this particular quake felt like it shook the very foundation of the entire building. Shinozaki was all I had on my mind. She was in serious danger. <laughs> yep. Mayu or continue search? Oh. Guess I'm going that way. Oh, that's where I am, okay. Oh, we're back! Oh, it could have been worse, as we've seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hope we cut to him right now. <laughs> oh, I'll bet he's just fine. Yeah, but what happens if he sees a dead body? I mean, come on. I'm, I'm sorry, I really can't wait to see more Shige right now. Remember that really creepy look he had in the opening sequence of the game where he's just like, ah, like with his glasses? You know that's gotta be coming soon. So, so One step below Kizami because he doesn't actually kill things himself. Yeah, this pleases me, new map. You're an idiot. You are an idiot. You're an idiot. じゃあ、気合い入れてみんなを探しに行くか。ああ。しげに近くにいることは分かったんだから。私頑張れるよ。Oh, before we set off? Oh, they are going together. When she said, oh, two pair of ours are better, I thought they were going to split up. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you think it's going to be like Yuka's story where they're like, you just, it's like just 
you can't find a bathroom for like an hour. <laughs> Yuka was so picky too. Oh, this one has corpses in the stall. Can't use that one. <laughs> no, uh, for real. Uh, the restroom might actually be ideal. I think it's where Ayumi is. So that's where we are now. There's a gap in the floor. A board has been laid across it. It's been unstable. Cross with care. Okay. Oh, this is really cool. So it's showing us the various places where we can now go. That's really awesome. Oh, stairway's still packed. But I'm not going to need them loose. So with Yoshiki, we can get them out of the way. Hey! I don't know, sit at them and write stuff. Oh, you know, I actually didn't think of that. It's a good point. Just push him down the stairs. Who cares? This is the long hallway. Oh, we're just we're just going there. Okay. Thanks for saving me some time. Seriously, as grossly inappropriate as it is, please just follow her into the girls' room. That's a decent strategy, but like, I, I still don't trust it. I really don't. Just break decorum and go in with her, please. How loud are you in the bathroom? Jesus. Once again, well, we'll see what happens with Yuka. <laughs> Mayu got lucky. Oh. It's just like the ring around, um, Seiko's neck. This is probably a sign of things to come. When did this happen and how? Even if I did hit my stomach on something, whoever heard of someone's belly getting bruised? That is pretty unlikely, yeah. Uh, I took a closer look and found myself momentarily breathless. <laughs> the reddish purple bruise was like fault lines emanating out in four directions, with my belly button serving as the epicenter. That's bizarre. It almost looked like a weirdly colored spider web attached to my skin. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, get the hell out, come on. Okay. So it actually went alright. Oh, piss off. え、いや、鈴本が出稽古へ出したから来たんだよ。大丈夫だったのか。ごめんごめん。あと、岸沼君はいいの、トイレ。Oh. That's freaking amazing. That is awesome. Oh. You know, because as serious as this game gets, like, that's the reason I kind of forgot about that guy. That guy was, like, one of my favorite parts of the first game. Because you just, he comes from nowhere. Oh, that's a great callback. I wonder if we ever get his hat and, um, glasses back. My mind was racing, with worst case scenarios popping into my head one after another. I kept hoping this was all my imagination, all nothing but a nightmare. 
but it sure felt real, and that was the scariest thing of all. Maybe I was sick. Maybe I needed to go to the hospital. I couldn't stand all this uncertainty. Are we back to explore mode? Because that'd be perfect timing. <laughs> but I didn't say anything about it. I just walked with Kishinuma. Yeah, Kishinuma. All throughout the school building in search of Shinozaki. I thought maybe if I went with him, I might run into Shig along the way. Or at least find some clues to his whereabouts. But no such luck. Our search eventually led us back down to the first floor. Having covered all our other bases, we set our sights on the pool. But as we approached the locker room... This game's really just taking me places now. Hello? Can I... okay. Yeah, that clicking? Whoa. Excuse me? Who the hell are you? A girl who looked to be around middle school age had been laid flat on the floor. Both her arms were bound and her eyes and mouth were covered with sash-like strips of cloth. She was obviously being held against her will. She was kicking both legs and writhing all around, frantically trying to break loose from her bindings, but it seemed likely that she'd succeed. <laughs> Well, sashes, it shouldn't be too hard. It was only after saying this that I noticed the bruises on her legs. Yeah, that... I did notice that. Like an X. Yeah, what do you think that means? Like, did she explode? Like, because Mayu exploded. Like, what would have happened that they would have been on her legs instead? Regardless of what caused them or how they might relate to my own injuries, this girl had markings like rope burns. Oh... Clearly visible on her slender thighs. They were peculiar bruises that looked almost like letters, as if they signified something that was just beyond our ability to decipher. Oh! Duh! It's 10 slash 21! She's one of the 21 sacraments for Walter Sullivan! Now I get it! As cruel as it's gonna sound, you should hold her down after you let her go in case she just flips out and punches you and runs because that's actually a relatively normal reaction. <laughs> Kishinima grabbed my arm to hold me back. I was a bit confused, but that is he suggested, and it didn't take me long to see the problem. The strips of cloth holding this girl actually seem to be rolls of gauze. Ooh, that is harder. And whoever bound her like this really did a number. The gauze was stretched haphazardly all across the room's furnishings. Several strands of it were then projected upward at the top of the nearest cubby shelf, where they were wrapped around the neck of a plaster bust. You are never getting out of that, Jesus! And from there, they extended up to the ceiling, where they were wrapped tightly around the handle of a bucket suspended in the air. How do you even do that? Suspended right above the girl. Oh. Is there like a trap? In other words, if we pulled any bandages the wrong way... And the plaster bust might fall, and if that happened... Oh. Oh, I thought it meant the bust would fall onto her and crush her or something, but the bucket would spill onto her? I mean, that would still be bad, but what's in the bucket? The girl was thrashing wildly, unable to move or see, and too scared to call out. Except for, you know, help me, thanks. Sadly, this wasn't helping at all. It only served to pull the plaster bust closer and closer to the edge of the shelf. You know what? We're- this is gonna be timed, isn't it? It was impossible to say whether or not she had any inkling of the threat that loomed literally right above her head. It seemed increasingly likely that this was the intent behind the trap. If the victim attempted to escape, she would only wind up killing herself. This is pretty rough. Huh. 
So, you're going to hate me for this, but this is actually a reasonable stopping point, and I really do, at this point, because of time, need to stop the installment. Sorry. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? It turns out that we got through the whole Yoshiki flashback and he's back with Mayu, and now they have a completely unique situation to this game. There's just some other random girl who has nothing to do with us, who seems to have similar injuries on her legs uh, to the ones that Mayu does on her stomach. We gotta save her and we have to act quickly. I honestly don't know if a decision will lead to a wrong end, but I get the feeling that whatever I choose will matter. So this could be a rough ride. And speaking of rough rides, that wrong ending, god damn, seriously, I cannot believe it, but like, despite what I've heard about this game being more disturbing than the first one, it's like, well yeah, but how could that even be? But then you see it for yourself. Jeez, like, that is sadism and a half. Sachiko is a freaking bitch. I have no idea <laughs> where we're gonna go with this. And now that we're in new territory, this is actually quite exciting. This could be anything. Mayu's with Yoshiki and Ayumi's not. And we have this new person here. Where could this possibly take us? I am dying to find out. Until next time, everyone.